Mm. What, what, what kind of stories are you um, focused on there in Paris? Well, the main uh, story today was that report in La Tribune that uh, Suez Lyonnais des Eaux could link up with Telefonica to bid for a third generation mobile phone, phone, mobile phone license in France. Um, however, the market is not reacting very positively to it, which shows uh, the switch compared to the past few months when it would probably have jumped from 5% on opening. Suez Lyonnais is now down about 1%. Um, well, the, um, the report was saying that Telefonica was the favorite to bid for that uh, fourth mobile phone license because the first three should go to the current operators who are France Telecom, Bouygues and uh, Vivendi's SFR unit. Other stories are BNP and AXA, which are both down this morning after rising quite sharply yesterday. Uh, that was about 9% for AXA, 8% for BNP. There were some uh, rumors in Paris that AXA could buy BNP. However, analysts are still a bit doubtful. They'd say that it's true that BNP is a cheap buy. However, AXA already has to digest a merger because it's still in the process of it integrating the UK's Guardian Royal Exchange. And also in Japan, it, is, it has taken over Nippon Dantai. So maybe a BNP Paribas takeover might be too big for AXA at the moment. Valerie, thanks very much for that. Valerie Vong joining us from Paris. Let's talk to Paul Jarvis now. He's with me in the studio. He's covering the UK market. Paul, um, panicky selling is uh, how uh, FTSE trade yes, this morning yes. has been described. Problems with data, though, as we've discussed earlier on. Mm. But what are the spread betters saying? Uh, yeah, well, at the moment, the call from IG Index is down around 72 points on the FTSE 100. The exact call is 63, 52, or 58 for the day. Um, I think in this market, though, you've got to trade very, very carefully, haven't you? And what a day for, these, uh, for, for the stock exchange to have a data problem. Um, the FTSE the FTSE's delayed. Um, I've spoken to someone from market supervision this morning. They say they don't know what the problem is at the moment. Um, they're, they're looking, they're looking it. into it and they can't tell us when it's going to be back. The world's largest international market is currently relying on a spread betting company to give us an idea of where we're going. It is frightening, Justin, isn't it? It's pathetic. It's <laughs> pathetic. It, uh, well, I, I'd certainly say there's some truth in that. Um, but, you know, we are, we're staring down the barrel this morning um, and we're doing it blindly. Yeah. All right. Well, let's talk about some. Uh, let's talk about some companies anyway, and move mm. on from that. Indeed. Well, Granada's uh, the the big one out this morning. The trading statement. Um, I think, unfortunately, um, everything they're say they're saying today is likely to get lost in the wash of. Um, Te technology stock meltdown, whatever happens today to the tech stocks, I think is going to be reflected in Granada's share price, such as it's been the linkage between the two in recent, recent weeks and months. Um, however, the trading statement in itself does look very positive. Um, certainly the trends on advertising revenue are very positive indeed. Um, looking between the quarters um, uh, for the half of as a whole, media sales are up 10%. Um, the net advertising revenue is 11% higher, but if you break that down into the quarters, it's actually rising to 12% in the second quarter, the advertising revenue uh, from 9% in the first quarter. So the trends are certainly going in the right direction. They're also seeing uh, the same on the dot-com side of the business, um, although that's very, very small in comparison to the television side, of course. But 5 million in the first quarter, it goes up to 8 million in the second quarter, so certainly it's going in the right direction. And programme sales as well are motoring ahead 13%. They're saying it's going to go to more than 20% in the second half. So all the, all the signs from Granada are positive, and I think um, what, what, one of the key concerns of the market at the moment is everything to do with, um, you know, is it what's going to happen with regard to uh, the Carlton Communications and United News and Media situation? Yeah, that um, looks a bit Who's going to bid for who? That really looks that, that, like that, a mess. Is, there are two great stories with this. One mm. is what's going to happen, because you know, there's uh, Jerry going to be sitting there waiting to be able to try and uh, pick him off in some way. He's got to try and go for the single ITN company, if he possibly, exactly. ITV company. Company. And the second element, is there any mention in there or any inference you can try and peel apart towards a, a, a split of the businesses? Because I think that has to be coming to yes. Surely he's got to, he's going to go, to, go soon, do the deal, split the business, and thank you very much, I'm off to go and enjoy uh, no, the fair country of Ireland. Mm. That's certainly the way it's looking, isn't it, Justin? I was going, I was going to say demerger after an acquisition seems to be the route that everyone seems to think Granada's going to go down. Paul, thanks a lot for that. Paul Jarvis from the Dow Jones Newswise Bureau. Let's get out to Ross. Ross, you're going to help us make some sense of where the UK market's going. What have you got? Well, we can at least try and get some um, quotes early on from the, from the futures uh, pits. The London FTSE futures were down nearly 200 points 
uh, on the open this morning. They got as low as 6.305. They did rebound a little bit um, to 6.40.20. So uh, the volatile U.S. session seems to be transferring itself. Certainly, after London, when we can't bring you the, um, the FTSE price at the moment, stock exchange has uh, pricing problems. But we can tell you the FTSE futures did drop 200 points, have rebounded a little bit, although they are still about 1% lower as of uh, a couple of minutes uh, ago, which gives me an indication of what is likely to happen when we can tell you what the prices are. That's it. Um, come a few moments. Uh, what are we doing? We're going to uh, touch on the fact that technology is holding steady around Europe, but in a sign that perhaps people are very, very nervous. They are taking money out in other sectors, those sectors which have done well of late. We'll update you on all the sector movers after this break. This is Scorebox. CNBC, first in business worldwide. Believe it or not, this is your lucky day. The day your hospital got its revolutionary new GE Lightspeed scanner. In an emergency, when every second counts, the GE Lightspeed is the fastest diagnostic scanner in the world. Yesterday, it would have taken radiologists 20 minutes or longer to scan your injuries. Today, the GE Lightspeed can scan your body in just over 30 seconds. What's more, it produces incredibly detailed images that are more helpful than ever before. Hey. The GE Lightspeed. How are you feeling? Does your hospital have one? There are two forces on the technology stocks around Europe today that are obviously both come from the United States. On the one hand, there's the factor that actually the Dow Jones technology, uh, or the Nasdaq, I beg your pardon, actually closed in less of negative territory than we saw it down when we closed in Europe yesterday. So that's positive. But on the negative side was this plunge of 13% that it did uh, in the meantime. And actually, technology is just a little bit higher, as you can see. As we were discussing earlier, there is only one sector in positive territory at the moment, and it is technology. Well, it's flat, really, but uh, we'll try and make it look more interesting by saying the arrow points up, which indeed it does. Uh, the losing stocks are generally those that have done quite well out of the, uh, the, out of the, the, the switch from new economy to old economy, energy, chemicals, pharmaceuticals, insurance. So a bit of profit taking, which would suggest to me, and I am not talking to people at this stage because it's our birthday, I'm just looking at the figures, but it would suggest to me that actually the nervousness has meant that people are taking some of their money out. They're saying, OK, time to take a step back away from these markets. It's just a little bit too volatile for me. The energy sector, as you can see, uh, these are the main movers on that. Uh, Repsol, Total Fina, which obviously has had a good run of it. Uh, Royal Dutch also down. Uh, let's have a look at some of the chemical losers and that's topped by Air Liquide. Axo Nobel over in the Netherlands also falls by just a smidge. And the media sector, well, TMTs, Technology Media Telecoms, uh, or something else, as I once uh, called it recently. Um, <laughs> as you may recall, when I thought there should be an internet technology in telecoms, because I was trying to work around it. Uh, they've, uh, they're actually, uh, as you can see, just continuing their general fall. EMTV. Technology, internet and telecoms. That's what I thought it should be, yeah. technology. And then we could have every morning... Yeah, oh, never mind. Uh, UPC uh, is down in negative territory, full over almost six percent. And Canal Plus, but Canal Plus has had a good run, has it? Canal, not? It, it, um, it did have a very good run in January and February. Um, and we'll actually, we'll be interested. We should pull up the chart, Canal Plus, and find out um, exactly uh, where it is in relation, because it had a tremendous run, didn't it, up until beginning end of Feb, and then it, it has come back steadily since then. We'll try. We'll pull that up a little bit later. We'll get the year. The year. A fact. A fact. While we're at it, I'll tell you what. Sorry. I'm going to find out um, the high for the year on Canal Plus because that is oh, you little devil, that you. is quite interesting. Go for it. Um, Go for it. I'll fill, shall I? While you've, you've, oh you've no, filled. I'll fill while you're doing that. Uh, hang on a sec. Where are we? The 52-week high is 369. We're now trading at 216.60, but the 52-week low was 55. Ah. 52-week low is 55. It went from 55 to 369. 
and is now back to 216. Can you hear an echo? Yeah, I would just ask them to turn it down. You see, that's what happens when they uh, they put on the old, um, I don't know which camera to look in now. This is very confusing. <laughs> There's one there. There's, look, there you this go. looks like a security shot, actually, doesn't it? This looks like one of those, you know, caught on camera. Yeah. Have you seen that guy that smashed up his computer? Yeah, he was so frustrated. Yeah. Which I might do whether I ever continue to get that I'm echo just thinking, in my Do you think we get away with that on the birthday? Mm, no. No, I don't think no. so. Um, let's take a quick look at the Swiss market for you. Just uh, yeah. to, the Swiss market right now is down about a percent. 69, 75, 36. We did have numbers out this morning from Zurich Financial, which were pretty good. Just beat the analyst expectations. We were looking for 14 percent. Um, Zurich came in up 16 percent. The company said it's going to invest about a billion dollars in the next three years on e-commerce. But the shares, I'm afraid, this morning are down 2.6 percent. On the face of it, analysts said they like the figures. Um, hasn't helped the shares. They, ABB... they had two benefited, didn't they, from the insurance um, run-up really? recently? Yes. C'est vrai. Monsieur Geoffrey. Mm, thank you, boys. Um, to all the people that emailed in yesterday on the derivative stuff, I wasn't here yesterday, but thanks very much for sending in all that stuff. We um, did work through it yesterday, I believe. Um, on that, we do you want to come in on it? Yeah. Uh, they, uh, they, you, if you listen very carefully to what the guest host said yesterday, it did actually make sense. Even uh, one of our vice presidents here went through the script of it and said, yeah, it, it does make sense. He's, you, you had to listen quite, quite hard because he messed it up and then started again. But it did ultimately, Jeff, I am assured, check out. Yeah, uh, Simon, I just wanted to note it just because a lot of people wrote in. And to the person, uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Witkowski in uh, Warsaw, uh, my apologies that Warsaw isn't on our weather map, but um, if you... Uh, could send us in the weather. We've got 35 minutes. Tell us what it's like outside. Have a look outside the window and we'll uh, address that for you. Justin, yeah. let's get on to some more stocks. Baltimore Technologies. We get a lot of questions about this company. Yeah, well, I mean, Baltimore is fascinating because obviously you can see its volatility over the past few days. It's got a product which is in demand, strong demand. Security over the, over the net is absolutely vital. So if you've got a product and people are going to need it, so this is the sort of stock you can quite happily trade on weakness. And uh, so if you've got uh, some, some prices coming down on it, then uh, fine, very good time to actually pick up. All right, we'll talk more about that with Trend uh, Micro a little bit later on. Scoot.com. Is this dot com different from most? Your well, apart from else, it's got a sensible business. It's been going for quite some time, not because it only changed its name to scoop.com. I mean, effectively, what telephone yellow pages. It's got a business track record. It has been operating well. It goes, it gets itself hideously overvalued sometimes. But again, uh, watch that trend. You can see where its baseline is, and you can trade into that. Again, it's one of those ones which is, it is not just a fashion fad. It's got a business case there. So that ain't no last minute. Justin, uh, somebody writes in, uh, give us three of the most undervalued stocks which you can recommend and why. Mm, okay. Now you've given us four. I have four, yes, well, I hate to be so awkward we'll, we'll about pop, these things. We'll pop those up on screen and then you can talk us through them. Cable and wireless. say whether they're undervalued or not, but they're ones I think worth looking at. Cable and wireless, um, this isn't a telephone business, this is an internet carrier. Um, and uh, it is currently undervalued. Ignore what's happening in, in China and Hong Kong. That, frankly, is almost irrelevant currently to the share price. Seen it come back a third. That is woefully undervalued, as far as I'm concerned. Has to be one to have in there. And the second one we got on there was Northern Rock. Uh, Northern Rock. Everybody hated the demutualisating banks but, but because they weren't going anywhere. They were, in a, they were in a business which everyone else was doing. Northern Rock has been closing its branches. It doesn't have a branch network. It now has a pile of twigs. Um, it's almost a virtual mortgage provider. Someone's going to buy this business. Came out with a great trading statement. We've been seeing those, that share price coming up. It's got further to go and then someone will no doubt take it out. ICI. ICI. Everybody has a grandma. Grandma owns ICI. Go and dust down grandma, raid the drawers and see what's in there. You'll find the share certificate, which would have already split into Zeneca as well. But again, a company that's going through such big changes. The most unfashionable company in the entire London stock market. It has currently still too low. It will be coming back. Infobank. Let's just squeeze this one in before we okay, get to Okay, Infobank. Break. That is uh, one, again, uh, a fashion stock which has been shooting up. But again, it's got a good business case to it. It's roared right the way up and it's come right the way back down again. We have to rely on newspapers now because we don't have a stock exchange here with any prices on it. From £43 down to £18. Um, and I have to say, watch it being restructured. It's going for a listing in America when it does that. And you demand. couldn't buy it back. Justin, thanks a lot for that. We'll be back in just a few minutes. Stay with us here on Squawk Box. It's our first anniversary. Happy birthday to us. Television is changing. 
A new type of viewer has emerged. New principles, new needs, new demands. It's an audience that no longer watches TV. They use it. They want information. Not just news, but data. 50-50 joint plan. Opinion. Clearly down to economic demand. Analysis. The line is going down, it's not going up. Real time. Big one is coming through from Los Angeles. Real numbers. It's not just currencies. Real events. This is a breaking story. When seconds mean millions, finding our first means money. The only service for the new Europe. It's global, immediate, accessible. CNBC. First in business television worldwide. No matter where you are, no matter what the time, when the markets open, CNBC is there at 1900 U.S. power line. Big picture. Some more insight. That's a winning proposition. At 2000 U.S. street signs. The stock market has been in rally mode. Wealth is the name of the game. At 2200 U.S. market wrap. Here's how the markets reacted. We have some late breaking news. I'm going to go down to the New York Stock Exchange. CNBC, first in business television worldwide. No matter where you are, no matter what the time, when the markets open, CNBC is there at 1900 U.S. power line. Big picture. Some more insight. That's a winning proposition. At 2000 U.S. street signs. The stock market has been in rally mode. Wealth is the name of the game. At 2200 U.S. market wrap. Here's how the markets reacted. We have some late breaking news. I'm going to go down to the New York Stock Exchange. CNBC, first in business television worldwide. I got the line. Jackson. May 4th. Colette. There's no way she could have known. De La Hoya. Definitely one of these. True story. I wanted to be Rocky. I really don't like the, the Porsche that much. I came right here on the airplane and stuff. Leno. Conan. Uh, hey, hey. The CNBC Comedy Block every Saturday and Sunday. Part of the CNBC Weekend. Hello everybody, welcome back to Squawk Box on CNBC Europe. Nice to have you with us this morning on our first year anniversary. It's Wednesday the 5th of April and I'm Jeff Cutmore. And I'm Simon Hobbs, a very good morning to you. Uh, here we are at the Open, uh, technology holding its own in the main France. Telecom tracks higher on news, it really is going for Orange and mopping up advisors as it does so. But Total Fina is down some 4%. Goldman Sachs just issued some research notes on the brewers in the UK. We'll uh, detail what they've got to say in a few minutes. Bye. Thanks a lot for that. Uh, just a bit of news for you. Zurich Allied has come in with uh, net profit up 16% uh, for 99, the figure of $3.26 billion. Uh, Ross brought that to our attention in the first half hour of the programme. Just in case you're only just joining us, I thought I'd better tell you it again. U.S. stocks on a roller coaster ride overnight in the wake of that Microsoft ruling. The Nasdaq dropping almost 600 points before recovering. Earlier on Squawk Box, Crispin Cripwell, a specialist in U.S. tech stocks at Morley Fund Management, pointed out that it really was panic selling. But he maintains that it's exactly what we need to see uh, as far as the tech market is concerned going forward. And he's upbeat about some tech stocks. But there are certain sectors that offered real value yesterday. Uh, for example, in hardware, we were buying Dell. Um, it stands to gain significantly from the corporate PC upgrade cycle, having seen a YGK lockdown. Uh, also in semiconductors, where uh, the earnings momentum for this cycle is really only just beginning, as um, a, a lack of investment over the last two to three years uh, creates a very good demand-supply balance. So, um, so. I, I do see value in certain sectors. And we'll have uh, Jesse Isinger from the Wall Street Journal with us a little bit later on. He's got a piece in the paper today about uh, US volatility and what it's likely to do for European stocks going forward. So uh, that discussion yet to come. But let's, let's stick with the tech theme. Trend Micro, the anti-computer virus group, is set to expand their business in Europe. But will this help uh, set its stock price alight? We're joined in the studio by founder and CEO Steve Chang. Uh, nice to have you with us this morning. Now, you've been up and running, what, for about six months? Yes. Uh, in London. Yes. Uh, what have you achieved so far in Europe, and, and what potential do you see here? Why did you come to Europe? Yes. Actually, we have been here uh, in Italy and uh, France and Germany a long time ago, and uh, now we just try to centralize, make this, because growing is 
for the last three years just doubling every year. And so last year we just doubling again. And I think Europe is great place. We just signed the Bridge Telecom, you know. And so then, you, if you have the Bridge, te if you using the ISP, they can provide you a virus-free email. Right, that so is something you're, interesting. You're actually at the, uh, the the opening of the gate, as it were, to the internet. Exactly. Aren't you? That's where your system works or your service yes. works. All right, yes. Justin, come in. Yeah, uh, the issue here, I would thought, is uh, in Europe. Uh, then you must have competitors in Europe. Yes. Who, who are your main ones here? used to be the Dr. Solomon, but then had been acquired about two years ago by Newa Associate. But now I think it doesn't really work out well, so we are probably schematic. You know, it's a stronger competitor for us in Europe. Okay, would you be looking for to getting a quotation somewhere in Europe? Uh, not in my agenda yet. Now we try to get whatever we have here uh -huh. so stronger, you know, and uh, because we already have a very nice uh, jump start and then we want to continue this uh, momentum and uh, there's a telecom company is so you know the uh, every telecom company they have an ISP you know and then ISP the price of the uh, bandwidth is you know is so competitive so the only way they can sustain their customer is they provide this uh, value-added service and we are e-doctor is something that fit into this so how, how do you get paid for this how okay they, how now they, they pay is uh, very interesting they just pay as an option, if they want this option, check into their fee, you know. Then they pay to this uh, telco company ISP, and then we share like a 50% or 35% of the cut from them. So we get the money from the telco. And, yeah. and is that a repeat fee? Oh, yes, a monthly. They just pay you monthly recurrent fee, and it's, it's the new business model. And, and is there a lock-in for that uh, arrangement, not, or no. can they leave and take up a competitor's system at any time they choose? Yes, yes. They, there's no lock-in here. The, the advantage for us, our competitor, is not get into that area yet because, yeah. But the big issue with, uh, with virus protection, yes. surely it has to be your industry trying to keep up with the latest virus. I mean, yes. are you not always running behind the, right. the hackers? Right. Yeah, it's, it's the nature of this business. I mean. Normally, every year they have somebody come up with some like a malicious virus. is a very oh. sort of creative way to in, uh, infection. Then we have to behind it. But after that, we well, uh, once we get this kind of uh, virus, then all the variants we can catch it because that we 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 are, have technology simulate their behavior, so we can catch all of them. So we always one step behind, but then they don't we catch up. So the end of the day is a support and services is very important. Mr. Yeah. Chang, let's, let's take a look at your chart and okay. see how the stock has uh, performed. Um, your question that's, that's oh, sprung to yeah. our minds when we were looking at this is, is do, you, do you think investors really understand what your company is about? Because um, the chart yes. looks reasonable in parts, but right. it doesn't look like some of those other technology charts that yes. we're familiar with. Uh, with when we take a look at NASDAQ listed right. companies? Sure, because nowadays people is a little bit over, overheat on this uh, internet company, but they have to really choose what is uh, this technology is uh, infrastructure. Like when you set up uh, e-commerce, we are infrastructure, you have to pay our, our antivirus as an internet security. So I believe our company, high growth and high profit, this is infrastructure. And then Tacom is more like a gambling. You have to get it or you, you don't get it. So I think I'm very comfortable. I ever such a good situation in my life. You know? So I, I feel com easy and you comfortable. You feel comfortable with the price <laughs> at the moment. All right. Thanks yes. a lot for joining hey, us. Thank you very Steve much. Steve Chang with us from Trend Micro. That company is listed on the NASDAQ. You've also got a Japanese listing, I, I Yes. Right. Ja okay. Just, people want to yes. find out more about right. the company. That's where they should look. <laughs> we'll be back in a few minutes. How will volatility on Wall Street affect Europe's markets? The Wall Street Journal Europe's Jesse Isinger will be here to give us his perspective. He's got a piece in the paper today in the Heard in Europe section. So you can uh, read along and, and join us after the break. Many projects with 
many communities. Chevron has made a commitment to be a global energy partner that keeps its promises, that keeps its word. Chevron, the symbol of partnership. We got uh, some research this morning out from Goldman Sachs. First of all, on the UK banks, it has cut um, Abbey National, Barclays, and Woolwich to market perform. I haven't yet got a, uh, a price out for that. Also, on the brewers this morning, there you go. That's what it's done with the uh, UK banks. As for, didn't have enough time to spell Woolwich correctly. Apologise for that. Woolwich. Woolwich is the uh, the new name for that. And also on the brewers, Scottish and Newcastle. Um, has been upped to a market outperformer. The target for the shares is 520. Scottish and Newcastle yesterday, if I can SCN, where are you, SCN? I haven't got, the, I haven't got SCN, never mind. Um, Scottish and Newcastle target for that is 520. It's cut Bass to a market outperformer as well. So they're both rated the same, but it's an up for Scottish and Newcastle, downgrade for, um, for Bass to market performer. It has upped its price target, though, um, for Bass to 9 hundred pence and yesterday bass closed at around about eight uh, eight forty i think is where we were yesterday eight forty one on uh, on bass um i believe bearing in mind we're not sure the prices at the moment uh are not exactly accurate because we've only got indicative prices on the London market because of course FTSE stock exchange sorry London Stock Exchange still has problems. Simon indicative meaning wrong well, just not correct. No. Not as exact as so they would like them to British, be. Very British, isn't it? it? Only indicative prices, I'm afraid, today. Uh, technology, you know, I, I said it might do well today because uh, we actually had the NASDAQ cut, and they are. The technology index overall, the stocks index, is in positive territory, a rise there of a half of 1%. So effectively negating that 13% that dip and... Uh, and retraction that we had uh, upon the Nasdaq yesterday, which is uh, really very, very interesting uh, going forward. On, on the subject of individual stocks, uh, of course, we had the uh, biggest internet flotation yesterday of iNet, uh, and uh, you can see that's also rising at the Milan Open. It's currently up the best part of 7%. It jumped 165% yesterday. Not a bad day, you? About, about 100%, this... wasn't it, on the opening? They both suspended, didn't they, pre bourse not, not a bad, you know, given uh, the situation with the NASDAQ by the close, to have still gained 165% ain't bad, but then, as uh, so often is the case, it's all in the pricing, really. Fiat, we've had some news coming through uh, from Fiat. Um, and there are sales, but I, oh, there we go. They say their market share in Italy is at 37.39% in March. Uh, do you want to put that on the screen, because we're up two-thirds of one percent? Um, uh, in March, uh, that, so that's a rise from uh, just above 37%. Car registrations in Italy rise by 4.7%. Uh, March, new car registrations, 4%. I think that's more broadly than Italy. No, that's the official figure. Ooh, I'm Italian glad I car registrations are up. I completely think confused it. everybody on that one. <laughs> Never mind, I don't expect it'll make a huge difference. <laughs> Fiat shares are higher, that's all you need to know. San Paolo IMI is down 3.5% at the moment. Uh, a lot of the banks suffering there. Uh, but then, the, you know, the banks have done relatively well of late, have they not, Ross Westgate? Um, they have. They have not Shall I give you a, a quick Dow Jones Stocks 50 before I go on holiday? Do that. <laughs> you may not know, Simon is, this is the last day we'll see Simon for, ooh, about ten days. Because um, um, he is off on holiday to again. Tunisia, is Did this right? Did you hear the cheer then? <laughs> Did you hear that cheer? <laughs> <laughs> we'll sort, you can sort them out later. I will. Before you get on the plane. I will. Um, France Telecom rises at the beginning uh, and pointing out one of the little tricks of the trade if you're going to buy something as a point of many advisors as you possibly can so other people can't have them. France Telecom's doing that. It's up 2.5% at the open on the losing front. Total Fina down 4.3%. AXA also suffers a smidge. But again, what a run. What a run, Rossi. <laughs> You know, you like these new glasses because you, you can peer over the top. I was, described as, um, I was described as a post-pubescent Milky Bar kid yesterday. Right. That was just your mother, I take it. No. <laughs> <laughs> With somebody in Thailand. By somebody in Thailand. Who also said, come on, he said, you earn enough money, can't you go and buy yourself some trendy ah, glasses? Just, um, 
I, they're fine, they're fine. You don't have to worry about the Well, obviously, they won't go down very the well. Weather, the weather in, po in Poland... Hang on, Justin's going to do the weather in Poland, is he? I think. Yes. This is important news. Uh, you've got to have this. Uh, the we today's weather in Poland. Uh, uh, the showers, a high, the high chance of showers, the high temperature of 17 degrees centigrade, that's 64 degrees Fahrenheit, low 6 degrees centigrade, 43 degrees Fahrenheit. Current conditions, ground fog, temperature <laughs> 5 degrees centigrade, we've already had that, and relative humidity 100%. Wind variable, that's 4 uh, kph, <laughs> that's 3 miles per hour, as far as uh, Simon's travelling is concerned. Sunrise at 6.37, sunset 5.03. Isn't that beautiful? That was so beautifully oh, read. It's a tragedy. tragedy. Mikowski, we appreciate that. Thank you very much for sending that in. And uh, I know we uh, are rather remiss in not putting Warsaw on our chart. Uh, what, what do you want to... You want to take the mickey out of Justin a bit? Well, longer. no, no, I think it was beautiful. It's Justin, you know, if you so ever decide his radio to give up. career ended. Did you know his radio career ended on, on Sunday? Well, the early, Justin the early had shift. his own show in London, broadcasting to the financial sector, and, and it, uh, it ended, didn't it, Justin? It was booed off the air, that's it. Oh. What time, were, what time was this It on? was Sunday lunchtime. It was called Making Money. With Justin Urquhart's Making Money on LB, and it was a phone-in. You could phone in and yeah. ask him any question you wanted. If only I'd known. You'd not have I got on for 60-year-olds asking about ISA accounts. I would have phoned in. Mm. Clearly it wasn't marketed well, was it, if um, you didn't even know, Ross, that it was on. Anyway, let's not go there. Let's not talk about this. Let me ask some, uh, Justin some sensible questions. Justin, we, um, somebody writes in, uh, describes themselves as a new day trader, which I think is rather brave of them. Uh, to be tra a day brave trading, new trader, uh, yes, exactly. day trading in these markets. Yep. The question is, I watch volume ticks daily on the FTSE and see that institutional traders get in and out of the market in a very short time. Why can't we small traders do the same, well, or can we? The only good news at the moment is he can't even the rest of the market can't do anything because there are no ticks at the moment to be able to see in the London market. They can do is the answer. You've now got very good internet operators that you can use, so you've got a whole choice of them where you can actually get live prices. But be careful when you get onto the internet uh, uh, operations. Are you getting indicative prices? Are you getting real-time prices quoted to you? And are those the prices you will actually trade at? Ask those questions before you start trading with those brokers. But the answer is, you can get in and out quickly, and you can get live prices. Always look to see, though, if your broker can improve on, apparently, what is known as best price. Because best price, frankly, ain't it. It's the sort of lowest common denominator which the regulators allow. They can improve on them in certain circumstances. Somebody writes in from an investment group um, who say they own AT&T um, and they ask for a short explanation of the pros and cons of tracking stocks. Um, I dare say they're Tracking stocks or tracking funds? Tracking, tracking funds, I presume, but perhaps they're also talking about the kind of benchmark stocks that I don't know, people well, are, are very interested in tracking funds. Okay, anyway, well, tracking funds, I'm take, take in terms of as well, uh, tracking stuff, have a few tracking stocks. If, you, if you're choosing a particular stock, try and find a peer group you can measure yourself against. So you can actually track yourself against it, how you're doing against it, and uh, so you can, if, even if your stock's going down, are you going down with the rest of that sector? There are other reasons. If you just look at the stock in isolation, you can often miss out the other information happening to the rest of that particular part of the industry. If it's tracking funds, then merely that's a fund which tracks a particular index, whether it's a particular national index or something like Techmark, for example. But be careful of tracking funds. Um, often you'll find the charges, some of them can be outrageous. You know, you've got FTSE 100 tracking funds charging 1%. It's daylight robbery. You can get a perfectly good tracking fund uh, for sort of 0 0.1, 0 0.2, actually 0.2. Now, there are new funds coming into the market this year. As you've seen in the States, in the States you've got spiders. Here they'll be coming in, they'll be called iShares, and they'll be able to buy effectively a tracker fund on just about any index you like around the world and trade them as an ordinary share. And the charges on those be minimal. They will be about 0.2%. So I think there's going to be a lot more choice in, in the years to come. So you can just, you, you'll be able to buy and sell an index without say, having to write off to some fund manager to apply for it or something like that. Mm. All right, Let, let's talk about some more stocks. Um, mm. Interesting, uh, in the, the notes that, that we uh, looked at earlier, water stocks are yep. some of the stocks that you favour. Um, I thought the old utility stocks were done and dusted in these um, yeah, times everybody hates where we're interested in tech stocks. The old, I mean, it's quite right too. And of course, now is the time to actually look at some of the areas which everybody hates and loathes and says, oh, they're far too dull. There, there's some pretty crummy companies there. There are also some very good companies there. Um, just pick out a couple of them which are probably worth just being aware of in terms of yield and in terms of what's going to be happening. United Utilities in the United Kingdom is an interesting play. It's got a good yield on it, but also it's got an interesting telecom element to it as well. So there'll be further 
further developments with that, you're going to see further mergers and acquisitions. The regulator is going to do some adjustments in this area. So I think you're going to see a review of the water section uh, in terms of valuations. Also, Kelder used to be known as Yorkshire. Fantastic yield on that one as well, uh, worth looking at, and also Thames. So these ones, if you're looking for a little bit more uh, so security, some opportunities in terms of some growth there, it's not going to be wildly exciting, but a decent yield, and at times like this, that can be worthwhile getting into. Um, then those are companies not to be ignored. Hydra, though, and uh, Pennon. You say there are a few that you need yeah, to... Yeah, ones like Hydra, I have to say, at the moment, and, and Pennon. Pennon was the old southwest water. Hydra is, uh, is Welsh, uh, the, the Welsh water and Swalek. Uh, and both of those, I'm afraid, have got issues which are, I think have, have really put the valuation in question at the moment. So steer clear of those. Just because it's a utility does not mean it's good, does not mean it's safe. There are good ones and the bad ones, just as the same as we talk with internet stocks and high-tech stocks. Justin, thanks a lot. Uh, Ross, got something for us? Yeah. Okay, we just uh, thought we'd take, lift the lid a little bit on what happens here on Scorebox during the show. Going to take you into the ground. You've never seen this before. This is Rod. He's the sound man How here. Are you doing? Hi, Rod. He's very good on the sound. Yeah, this is uh, two of our directors. We've got James and Bernard. They push lots of buttons in here. They get very excited. They're the guys that are always speaking in peace. We just ignore them. It's the best thing to do. Simon's over here as well. Simon, come in and tell us what the rest of the, uh, the crew does here. What does this man do? Yeah. We don't what, ask him, what do you do? <laughs> ask, ask what do you do, son? I put the wrong graphics on the screen. Right, he's, he's responsible for putting the wrong graphics. On the back here is our producer, Don Spain. Don, say something. I'm the one who does the work. Right. <laughs> he's, he times the show. Yeah, he's the guy that we ignore. And uh, we've also got yeah. the man who pushes the buttons to run the tape. And uh, rolls the stings at the wrong time. And, and uh, roll the button. So, like that. And that's what he does. <laughs> Comprehensive package. A widespread party on the street. Analysis. Debate is back here. Business news. A people power rally. And significant events of the day. And Alan Chernoff, who broke the story, joins us now. The mob is infiltrating Wall Street. U.S. market wrap. Every weekday at 2200 CET on CNBC. Promise you'll call me. I will. I promise. No matter what. is a promise. Wherever you are and whatever you do, Alliance with its global partners is the power on your side. Hello everybody, welcome back. This is Squawk Box on CNBC. Now, Justin Urquhart Stewart is our guest host this morning from Barclays Stockbrokers. Justin, before we get to the end of the programme, let, let's deal with the issue of interest rates in the UK. Yeah. Um, I think we need to talk about that. Is there going to be a rate rise tomorrow? It, it is so close, it really is. I and mean, you can argue it either way. I and mean, we were just going through some of the elements of what's going to be positive, what's going to be negative. You look at sterling, if you look at the unemployment situation, if you look at the budget expenditure, all of those issues would say, heaven's sake, we're going to have to put rates up here to try and slow the economy down. Uh, equally, there are other issues in terms of inflation, in terms of uh, some of the retail sales, you're saying, well, actually, we could actually, you know, leave them as they are. And funny enough, if you actually take the nervousness in the market now, blowing the froth off the high-techs could actually mean that it actually prevent people being quite so exuberant in their expenditure. After all, if you're worth 20% now than you were, say, a month ago, then you're going to be less inclined to go out and actually be party-popping quite so much. So I think there's a good chance they may leave it for the moment, but I think you're going to see a, we'll see a rate rise coming up in the month after. I think we'll peak, I've seen some figures, people see going up to eight and a half, nine percent. That's hogwash. I think we'll peak at six and a half percent. We'll still get nervous markets as a result of it, but in many ways, it sounds stupid. I almost rather have the nervous markets to make sure we don't see those rates going up too much higher. Eddie George made those comments yesterday, um, basically telling industry that they couldn't expect um, any help as far as the strong pound is concerned. To me, they seemed a little, little timed coming two days before an MPC meeting. Yeah. Was there any message about rates in that, or was he 
basically just talking off the cuff, if you like, at a, at a meeting because he felt he needed to say something. Ed is a good man, he's, but he's trying to be a bit like Greenspan and try and learn to be a bit mercurial, but he's not that mercurial. I think what he was saying was, actually, chaps, there's not a lot we can do. The trouble with the central bankers is we know there's not much he can do. It's a bit like the European Central Bank saying things, well, it's stable. Um, well, uh, we know, we, uh, I don't, we, none of us really can understand well, quite what they're driving on about. What they've got to be careful is how they say it, because we know that actually it's not so much sterling is strong, it's just the euro is incredibly weak. But if you put out messages to say there's not much we can do, you may end up actually pushing more strength into sterling, because then um, people know it can only go one way. So if I were him at the moment, it's just all you can do is stick to your knitting and say, we've got to look to try and make sure this economy does not grow too fast. And that's only the only way you're actually going to be getting sterling coming done. Justin, thanks very much for that. Well, it's a special occasion and we're very pleased to have had you with us it's today on this uh, first anniversary program. Let's uh, kick it over to Simon and Ross who've got something special for us this morning. Ross. Jeff, thanks very much uh, for that. You're standing in front of the Squawk Box anniversary uh, cake here. As you can see, it's a beautiful cake that Peter Hoskins, one of our producers, has been out baking all night. What do you think of it, Simon? Fantastic, fantastic. Can we have a slice? We'll get, we'll get a slice. Are we, we going to do the honours? Jeff or... Uh, well, Justin, give us a hey, look at that. When a stockbroker hands you a knife like that, you know there may be trouble ahead. So thank you very much. There you All go. Right. All right, here we go. This is the inaugural, uh, the inaugural slice for one year of this show. I have to, although I, I shouldn't be doing this because I didn't start on the show originally, did I? Go on, Jeff. Get around, Come on. You were, you, were, um, you were with the show. Give it, give it the show. slice. Oh, Justin, come here and slice the cake. We'll save oh, a piece for Sarah. Privilege. There you go. Right, OK, only you. Well, that's for cut, I suppose. There we are. Yeah. Many happy returns, Squawk Box. Oh. Yay! Well that's done. Fantastic. He cut the ribbon as well. Yeah. It's actually made of plaster of Paris, so that's not so. many ships in your life. <laughs> <laughs> right, should we, um, you. should we, uh, I don't know how you do this, but there we go. We'll... Yeah. A small You've slice. obviously not gone through marriage yet. Um, how did you know? Because you've got a big smile on your face. Here. <laughs> there we go, hang on. Right, there's a, there's oh, a... Look. God wonders after this whether they'll let us do another year. That's what the boss wants to see us for later, I think, actually. Have, have we By been the commissioned for another year? This is oh, the, thank you very uh, much. Your holiday cake. Okay. Uh, oh, excellent. I'll take that on the flight. That'll go down very well I'll in Tunisia. Well oh, okay. Have we got any prices yet on the FTSE? Does anybody know? Have we got any prices yet on the FTSE? No, we haven't. Oh, so <laughs> it doesn't matter. All right, there we go. Justin. There we go. Is that big enough chunk for you? That's a hell of a slice. Well done. It's a slab. It's a slab. You, you, there you go. <laughs> Back up the lab. Where are they going? Pop, pop there's there's okay. plenty to go. Plenty to go around. Let's try this. Let's try the official tasting. Do you want some of these? Peter, thank you very much. Mm. Happy birthday. Hint of raisins. A little bit of, um, there's a little bit of, sort of rum. Some sort of alcohol mm. mixed in there. Mm. Of course, anybody tuning in now is thinking, what are mm. these four guys around eating cake for on the programme? Mm. <laughs> anyway, tomorrow's cooking programme. Mm. Live demonstrations. I, I, think I need a drink to wash it down with as well. You need a drink to wash it down with? Ah. Mm. But we don't have any glasses. That could be a problem. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's absolutely tremendous. Here's the champagne. <laughs> so I have a glass, I'm not going to open it, because it will be just too late. <laughs> I feel an early break is coming on. It's very due to this. Simon, you're unusually quiet. I know, it's because I can't hear what the director's <laughs> saying, and I'm thinking, if I start talking, we're going to smack into ads. Well, so. You want to go and get a couple of glasses? Mm. Ah, fantastic. <laughs> well it's done. It's chaos. It's chaos. Anyway, Justin, we thanks go. very much for all your appearance. How many times have you appeared on the show? I have absolutely no idea. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, there you go. But everyone's been a great privilege. Oh, oh, that's oh, going well. well. Oh, well done, Jeff. A well sourced <laughs> cake. He actually has an outside catering company as well. I forgot to mention <laughs> that to you. <laughs> which is available. Right, well, that's it from this edition of School Box from us, the gang here, Jeff, Simon, right. Justin. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Um, have a good trading day. And we'll see you all again tomorrow. Thanks, Thanks for, for staying with us. Yeah, bye. Cheers. Coming up on CNBC, Mark.